Good day guys, Austin here, and in this one today, I have been keeping something very special up my sleeve. Now I've been working tirelessly, day and night, configuring, downloading, doing everything within my might to get the Raspberry Pi playing games it had never done before. Is it possible? I don't know, we'll find out now, but I need to say my Raspberry Pi it runs 1.4 stock. I've overclocked it to 1.5. I'm using a flirt case. God knows who's been spreading rumors saying that flirt cases don't work. They work like a charm. And it is keeping my little pie as snug as a bug and nice and cool so I can do this kind of performance without any problems whatsoever. So I'm gonna get stuck into this now. We're gonna see exactly how far we can push this pie and see where it goes. So without further ado, let's get stuck in. One day, many moon ago, there was the birth, the birth of the Raspberry Pi. An awesome incarnation granted to us, enchanted by the Raspberry Pi Foundation. But since its incarnation, questions have been asked. Can the Raspberry Pi play the Sony PSP? It's a yearning question. Scholars squandered in every direction to hunt for the quest of the Holy Grail. Surely it's not got the power to play these types of games. Surely all as we have got is the PSP mini titles. Well, you are wrong, my friends. You will be wrong because there is great news. Great news bestowed throughout the lands. You have the power. You have the power in your Raspberry Pi as long as you are graded to the most recent version. But this, this is what you have now. This is real-time graphics rendered through the stock Raspberry Pi. Top right hand corner, those are the frame rates. Those are what is taking place right now inside the new Raspberry Pi. Sure, it's not an amazing upgrade. Sure, there's lots of things I would have liked, but for 30 goddamn bucks, this is what we have got. We have got nigh on perfect PSP titles playing better than I ever would expected, better than that was on the original PSP, better than I could have ever dreamed for. Those questions we asked, they have been answered. The Raspberry Pi Foundation has given this model B+, and it gets an A+, in my eyes, because this is the gameplay that I can now have using it. It has got its caveats and its limitations, and we'll address those in just a second, but for now, <laughs> Embrace its beauty. This, Castlevania, the Dracula X Chronicles, a beast which has been forgotten throughout the decades, has now been brought back to life in stunning realization. Using higher graphical fidelity, it looks beautiful in HD. It looks beautiful controlling this, using my controller on my couch on my 60 inch screen. Something which even if I link my PSP up to, wouldn't look this good. And this is all within the Raspberry Pi. No flickers, no slowdown, HD resolution. This is how PSP has got to be played. So now, let's take a look at them all. Starting off with something which also has had an upgrade, Mega Man. What a beauty this is. Now, even in its standard form, playing on the PSP, it looked beautiful. However, with the internal resolution of the PSP being, what, 240 to 270p? Blown up to 60 inches, it doesn't look good. But having two times resolution put onto the emulator running this, this is the graphics fidelity that you get to play. Now, to get this running, there is a hell of a lot of bridges that I had to build, a lot of hacks, lots of slashes, and a lot of hair pulling to get it up to this standard. I will release a video, but hopefully this will become the norm in the builds for this emulator in the future. I have 
done certain things to enable it to take full advantage of the PSP's powers. Something that I'll talk about in just a second. But for now, embrace the good looking world of Mega Man. It is an awesome game. I love this one, but not as much as Lego. Ah, oh, Star Wars, the original Lego franchise. This is on every system. And I didn't think the Raspberry Pi would have this kind of power. And it shouldn't. And to be honest, it's almost there. Almost. But when things start getting intensive, you start blowing stuff up, it gets a little hectic. In this kind of environment, just running around the corridors, it's all good. But then, when the doors blow open, things start to slow down. And one of the things that I had to do to get this emulator to work so well is frame skip. Now, on a game such as this, which is 60 frames per second, it's not too bad because even if it's running half of those frames, it's still running full speed, but at 30 frames per second, something that us gamers have got used to quite some time ago. So, yep, yeah, it's not ideal, but in this kind of scenario, it's perfect. The only problem is that this game just isn't quite there, so those frame skips are just too much. But this is Crisis Core, something which does deal with this emulator very, very well. I'm playing on the stock PPSSPP. I had to build it myself because it seemed that the most recent version that was given to me from the most stock version of RetroPie, it just wasn't cutting the mustard. I knew it had some power in there to be unleashed and this is what it did. This is the power which was given to me from updating it. Now again, hopefully because those have just been updated, there's a lot of switching around with the new build of the Raspberry Pi, it probably just hasn't been self-populated. But now, I'm hoping that this will become the norm. So you get this kind of performance from your PSP. Absolutely beautiful. Now, the way we got this performance was by hacking and slashing the hell out of PPSSPP. I had to download the most recent version, I had to do a lot to the configs, and I had to do a lot of the settings to adjust it to take as much power from the, well, Raspberry Pi, but play the games at a... I don't know, a kind of resolution and visual experience that I would like to enjoy on a large TV. Of course we can leave everything stock, but when you blow that up to 42 inches plus, it just doesn't look right. But luckily with frame skip, everything onto minimum and a few little tweaks here and there, we got this and many other games working to the full potential. Yeah, it's not ideal, but again, we are playing this on a 30 buck little single board computer something which technically shouldn't even stand the chance at even coming close to this kind of graphical fidelity and by god did we do a good job yo tie down look at this kid i beat blood out that fool Another game which is working pretty damn well on this setup is Dragon Ball Z Shin Budokan 2. Yep, it's an old favourite of the franchise and it's emulated pretty damn well using this build. It's not the best out of the IP but I would say well worthy of playing it on your little Raspberry Pi. And this, Loco Roco. This is probably the reason why people play the Raspberry Pi stuff. It is breathtaking in its visuals, the gameplay, everything about it just oozes quality and it, it just makes you feel good playing this game. If you haven't played it already, make sure you do because this is an absolute beautiful game. The people who made this put so much attention to detail in terms of all the little aspects, the sounds, the presentation. It's nigh on perfect and it's so simple in what it does. How they managed to encapsulate the sound, oh, it does the PSP justice. Because it was on those little UMD, more or less like a mini CD, it was able to get the soundtrack spot on and when you get these kind of visuals this kind of quality in the sound it just plays hand in hand and well just listen to it it's beautiful It 
it's games like this that make the Sony PSP still a favorite of mine. Yep, it's getting old now, but this is what, PS3 generation and the game show? And another one from that generation? Me and my Katamari, what a game again. The visuals, the sound, the gameplay, all completely unique. It makes me smile like <laughs> that game should. It brings you back to your youth and takes the playability further than what the visuals do in most of the more AAA titles nowadays. This one nails it. This one absolutely nails it. And it plays like a dream on this emulator. I didn't think it would be able to push this kind of physics, but it does. And another one which goes hand in hand with the sound and all that kind of stuff, Space Invaders Extreme. We're going retro now. But this one, I don't know how it does it. It kind of ties in the music to the gameplay. It's not the most cutting edge game. It's not pushing boundaries or anything. But raw gameplay encapsulating you with sound and visuals like this, it's what original retro games did back in the day. They never had the budgets, they never had the technology or the know-how to push the kind of graphics that we have nowadays. But when it comes to the gameplay, nails it. Nails it every time. And that's why people now still go back to the old Space Invaders and play their retro games and still have that amount of love for old classics as what they do with, I don't know, millions spent on these big budget AAAs. It's beautiful and another one jesus wept how many retro classics can you update and do it well pac-man on the psp soundtrack pumped in visuals all neo and beautiful looking if you haven't played this make sure you do it's an awesome adaptation of the original classic they knew how to make games back then and nowadays they know how to push them games even further not as far as i can push them but pretty damn close okay then next up we got tekken 6 and this one is your go-to option for fighting probably on this emulator running on a raspberry pi yep it's running half speed 30 frames per second and it should be 60. it's not ideal but for 30 bucks who could complain some games play well running that kind of speed some games you can really tell it depends literally on what you're playing and well the power that your little raspberry pi possesses it's finding that sweet spot in the middle ground to get maximum playability while still being able to well get the full realization of the graphics still get a constant frame rate and this one it works pretty damn well it's very stable to complain about me you've got time to work there's nothing to do around here millie why don't you go out on a pitch come on i'll join you we can all do it together yeah. all right something that the psp did so well is rpgs this little machine is full of them and they're in all different types different genres different feels different vibes but the good thing is playing it through this emulator it plays them like a dream because most of them are text-based or 2D-based, story-based. The frame rate isn't exactly smashing through the roof. Playing these types of games really plays well. So literally every game that is on here that is RPG is more or less playable. I'm talking about top-tier Square Enix stuff. They knew how to make their things and, well, they did it well. All seeing king of all cosmos. And the wonderful royal family have come on down to Earth. Now we're going on to some of the games which I wish were working, but they just aren't, I'm afraid. Maybe one day when the Raspberry Pi gets a bit more power, maybe we get a Raspberry Pi 4. At this stage, they're just not there. And first up, we've got Wipeout. I think this is Wipeout Pure and... Again, I'm a huge Wipeout fan. Since I got my first Sony PlayStation, popping it in there with my mates the very first day, the first time we ever played anything of that kind of thing, the whole room was swaying side to side as the spaceship moved. It must have been unreal watching it. But unfortunately, it's just too much for this PSP. You need constant frame rate in order to get the maximum playability out of it, and it just hasn't got it. Same with Gran Turismo. Oh, 
what a dream it would be to have this written on Raspberry Pi. But the level of graphics, the level of frame rate it requests, it's just too much. It, stutters, it slows down too much and it's just not there. Another heartbreaking tale is Manhunt 2. Rockstar with your classics. It's the same with all the Vice Cities to be honest and all the GTAs on this apart from Chinatown I think it was. They're all just at the beginning when there's not much going on yeah sure it's fine you can walk around but then as soon as you start getting into the action the frame rate just drops far too low and you can tell and it really shows when you're playing through the game like I said most of it when you're in the corridors you're running around fine no problems whatsoever but the second the very second that you come into contact with anybody that's going to start any kind of harm the frame rate just goes crazy and with that goes the control lag and everything that goes along with it it becomes almost impossible to play through this game which means that yeah it kind of looks the part but it surely doesn't play it and again that goes hand in hand with this sega rally on here it almost looks the part but because the frame rate is half speed and because the game twitches so much from side to side you can tell just far too much even with the controls it just gives you far too much lag which something which gets away with most of the series and one that i thought would be working but isn't because it's not exactly a twitchy kind of game is monster hunter freedom unite this one is more of a low-key walk around get things done kind of game you're not exactly in massive battles with stuff except the odd monster every now and again but when you're in the outside regions, it's just far too glitchy. There's artifacts on the screen. The I could probably get around it if I mess around and tweak some settings. But in the overall config that I used on this one, it's just not there. And something which is almost there and a flagship for this system is this. It's almost almost there but every now and again you get these little micro stutters it's not game breaking or anything but it just takes you out of the immersion of the game and means that for me it's just there but just not quite <laughs> But something that is, is this little puffy. I did not think this would run by any kind of standard on this emulator. I tested many games and I've tested them at many settings. This one, I launched up at my, well, generic config and I got this. The game is beautiful, it plays like a dream, even running through this emulator, taking huge drops in like frames per second, performance, it's almost unnoticeable in real time gameplay, even going up against some of the biggest beasts as you can see here. The frame rate, yeah, it takes a hit, but is it noticeable when you're actually playing? No, not by any means. It just seems to suck it all up and I've got no idea how that little Raspberry Pi is making this kind of magic happen, but it is. I'm not going to argue at all, but a game like this getting this much performance, beautiful. And that's what it is. It's not all doom and gloom. It's not all bad news. There is some great titles that are working and many more could probably pushed even further, giving me a bit of time and a bit of effort to actually put in and give some of these titles just this tweaking some of the configs to make on a per game basis you could probably squeeze a lot more out of there but for me pumping many of these games out and just seeing how they run on a generic low-end profile many of them get in top tier performance on this if you haven't played this either by the way toy story what a game on this it reminds me of toy commander on the dreamcast but 
Oh, beautiful representation of the franchise and plays like a dream on this emulator. And for those of you uh, Ape Escape fans, yeah, this one runs too. I wasn't expecting not to, to be honest. When I seen my third birthday run, I knew that this little gem would start popping up. And it's no, no classic, but for me, it's a fond one in my heart. And that's about it for the Raspberry Pi, to be honest. It too is a fond one in my heart because it's brought us back to retro gaming on a reasonable budget. 30 bucks and you get literally every system from, I don't know, Atari 2600 all the way up to PlayStation 1. And it is pretty flawless at almost every system that it does along the way. Sure, with this new incarnation, we've now got these kind of games running to this kind of potential. Is it ideal? No, not by a long shot. I would like a lot more, but for that a lot more, you gotta spend a lot more because getting that kind of performance or wishful performance does cost money. That's when you start going down the old droid start of the game because that can play PSP very well. That can play Nintendo 64 very well. Dreamcast and every game that we've just talked about. But you are spending twice the amount of money. And it's that double-edged sword. Are you interested in these games? I sure am. But I would like myself to play them on an old droid because that's what it's equipped for. It's got the CPU. It's got the RAM. It's got the GPU. It's well equipped for playing these games and squeezing the most out of them for a tiny, tiny little system. But again, it all draws down to price. Do you want to spend twice as much to do that? I personally, yeah, I would because I'm greedy for that kind of stuff. But then you've got the Raspberry Pi factor. You have cases, third party development going into so many different things, such as again, like I said, the cases. You can buy a case for Raspberry Pi in almost any design, any system, any kind of setup you desire. It's all just plug and play and off you go. For other single board marketers at this moment, there isn't that kind of option. You've either got to make one yourself or you've got to go down the route of getting just standard box stand cases. And is that the kind of thing you want? It's all personal choice. It's all down to how much money you want to spend, all down to what games you want to play. But this incarnation the most recent version of the raspberry pi it has squeezed every ounce of juicy gameness that it can out of that tiny little board for the tiny little price that it's asking for so is this a worthy upgrade hell yeah it is a damn good upgrade is it worth the money of course it is and more so to be honest but if you want to get this level of gaming that i would say buy yourself an old droid if you want to make the most out of what you've got and make it even more snappier even just in the front ends itself it's an awesome choice and the fact that it's still at the same price as the old one if you haven't got one already buy this new one if you've already got one do you want to play psp games and if you do do you want to upgrade to this or do you just want to take the hit and upgrade to the old droid or the tinkerboard whatever it is that you want the options are out there the fact that i've just presented this to you now maybe open some more ideas and open some more doors this isn't just about the hardware yeah the raspberry pi can squeeze a lot but at the end of the day it can only be utilized by the emulators themselves if they have more power if they can squeeze any more out of the power that's in these single board computers then yeah we can go a hell of a lot further but there's bigger fish to fry especially when it comes to the horsepower in these tiny machines so that's enough of me waffling on guys that is today's video but i would love love to thank everybody that's made this possible and welcome the new members into the simply austin club oh what a little club it is too I would like to thank each and every one of you guys who make this possible, who keep the lights on and keep these videos flooding out. I would like to give my personal thanks to Adam Westwood, Andrew Broadhurst, Berno Walsh, Christopher Barnett, C Styles 101, David Bell, Dudebury, Ed, Phil Tadreen, Gabriel Hassan, Heath Phillips, Ian MacDrill, James Dingo, James Metcalf, Joe White, Ken Varley, Kevo, Kintaro, Mike Brown, Mark Mandeville, Mark Tobin, Mark Gardner, 
Michael Lassard, Mitch Dudewart, Stoma, Mitch Stoa, Mitch Stortout, Mitch Stortout, Mitch Stortout. Yes, we got it. Paul Cook, Big Ray, Richard White, Rob Hunter, Rumble, Simon Dunbar, Tony Quirk, and Toon Lady. You guys have been awesome, and you guys have been this month's pledges. Next month, hopefully more of you will join and we can get more of your names up here. It's again, you guys who keep the lights on around here. But as always, guys, it's been an absolute pleasure bringing this here. Please keep it all pumping up. Please keep on bringing these new incarnations of beasts we thought we would forget. But no, we bring them back from the dead. But thank you very much. Please like, please subscribe. Please do all the things that you would do in this magical world where we squeeze a little bit extra out of those raspberry pies. But most of all, most of all, you have a good day. Laters!